Hi everybody. It is July 14, 2019. Louisiana Governor Grateful Storm wasn't worse. And I'm sure a lot of you in this area are very grateful as well. Wow. Well, you know, this is what we live now with these manufactured storms that they call tropical storms or hurricanes. Uh, Wow. Well, there are people who have suffered having their homes flooded, their businesses flooded, uh, areas flooded, but nothing close to the scale that Louisiana, the state of Louisiana, the government officials, the mayor of New Orleans, the, the, they called out military, National Guard, the Department of Homeland Security was on it, the Department of um, Health and Human Services declared a public health emergency, sending down 100 HHS soldiers, presidential emergency declaration, shelter-in-place curfews. All right, what was this? What were what what did we just experience here? Did they try to bring on something far worse but failed? Did they try to bring on something far worse but perhaps well, who knows? Another country interfered <laughs> with their frequencies to weaken it? I don't know, but you know, living this over and over and over again, it's really getting very tiring. So, storm wasn't that bad, but mainstream media continues to post these threatening warnings. Barry weakens to tropical depression. Authorities still warn of dangerous flooding. And I'm not saying there won't be dangerous flooding, but, you know, how, how do you even... I don't like living in a world where, you know, I can't discern easily based on the reporting, based on the facts of what is going to transpire. Life-threatening floods, tornadoes, still possible as Barry drenches Gulf Coast. And this was posted a few hours ago today. Really? Okay, Hurricane Barry storms will hit Midwest this week and bring oppressive heat. The tropical storm is bringing heat to the Midwest. All right, um, I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this video. Listen. The August flood, both my wife and I lost, uh, we are, both of our cars were totaled in the flood. So when their street flooded badly Wednesday, the couple jumped into action. Brad and some neighbors checked inside a catch basin full of standing water, and here's what they found. It was filled to the absolute brim, uh, compacted over what looked to me to be a very long time of mud, leaves, and a uh, ton of roots. They were a bit surprised, especially since the city's interactive map showed that catch basin listed as cleaned. Since this year, when they came out with the website, we've been checking it, and we felt that we were going to be protected because we saw that it had been cleaned and inspected. But across the map, many catch basins marked in blue actually haven't been cleaned in years, some going back as far as 2017, including the one on Oster Street. He and his wife posted about the situation on social media and received a ton of responses. So it's clearly still not draining. Um, you know, I... I guess I just want to be very clear, though, that, that, you know, we're not really trying to point fingers at anybody or, or blame anybody. We just really want to help contribute to improving the situation and, and hopefully protecting the city. I just have to say something here. Americans have been socially engineered to never, ever blame anyone, uh, never confront anyone. Uh, we just want the situation, you know, worked out. Blame your city. Blame them. That's why you pay taxes. All right.
That's why I hold tension on the line when Joe I'm... Joe Otilio, a private catch basin cleaner, says his service is in high demand, especially today. We found him at a badly flooded storm drain in Mid-City. The city's not draining. We're already to the other end. Our line is clear. It's the, it's the city line that's not clear. The city side's cl uh, clogged up. After cleaning this catch basin and a lateral drain pipe, we are ready to the other end. He found an even bigger blockage on a city water main. Yeah, okay. Clearly, one, two, three. The city has more work three, to do. Three. Clearly, the city has more work to do. Look, if you were an employer and the city was your employee, then you you're paying the city to do a job that it is not doing. What would you do? Would you say to the employee very nicely, well, I don't want to blame you. I don't want to confront you. I just hope that you start doing your job. Look at yourself as an employer. Your city officials are your employees. All righty. So, even though it was not on the scale that mainstream media was reporting, there still were rescues like this one. A man and his dog. There still was flooding. The storm surge was not as bad as they were claiming. And all of this is good news, except for the people who have had their homes flooded out and, yeah. So this, oh, I'm sorry. This was in uh, Tierbone Parish. This is in Lafayette Parish. Lafayette subscribers, will you weigh in? Will you leave a comment? letting us know that you are okay. Sunday morning, high water vehicles from the Lafayette Parish Sheriff's Office and one from Jefferson Parish near New Orleans were called into Youngsville at the request of Mayor Ken Ritter. The deputies patrolling neighborhoods with high water, even going door to door on one street to see if anyone needs to be rescued. One lady with several puppies was trying to move from her flooded street to higher ground. Deputies rescuing the three pups, loading them into the high water vehicle, bringing them to safety. Over in Youngsville's Highland Ridge subdivision, Amy Potas says the water came up quickly and is slow to drain. I went to sleep at midnight last night and it was down and I woke up at about five this morning and it was up. In 2016, water was inside homes in Potan's neighborhood. One neighbor posting a sign in their front yard pleading for drivers not to create a wake. Fortunately, no water was reported in homes this time. Nearby Thank on God. Heritage Drive, a much different scene. Nearly four inches of water getting into this home the third time since 2016. The residents and their dog taking shelter upstairs. Kira Ridgely, who lives across the street, says the LaSalle Cooley is backing up. It's discouraging that as taxpayers, we don't have the drainage that we need and they want to keep adding new housing developments. Ridgely says a couple is set to close on a home across the street, but now they're concerned. I mean, they're looking around at the property. You can see how there's water in the yards, on some of these yards, so. Yeah, that's not the first time I've heard someone trying to sell their house and then it gets flooded and who's going to buy it? This is uh, Iberia Parish. Flooding here, streets, a lot of roads are flooded out, but I have not seen a whole lot of... Um, homes flooded out. So this is the same area, Youngsville, 
and it does not, the, the water does not seem to have gone in any homes. That's very good news. This business got flooded out in Iberia. Um, computer equipment inside of his business and he says it's very frustrating. He dealt with this in 2016 when the port of Iberia flooded and he says every time it gets more frustrating than the last. Mentally it's frustrating. It just, you know, I mean, because you got, just like me, I've got, I've got employees. Employees got wives, employees got kids. They all depend on you. Standing walk. Um, Denim Springs, can't play this, this is uh, Live Storms Media. Denim Springs, a lot of the roads are flooded out, but I've not seen any homes flooded out. I need you guys to weigh in on what is taking place in Baton Rouge and Denim Springs, in uh, Lafayette, but Mississippi, what is going on in Mississippi? This was, it looked like you were getting slammed with severe storms all day. This was at 9.37 a.m., so it was uh, 8.37 I'm not sure where it, you know, crosses into another time zone, but uh, what was happening? I have, I actually spent a long time trying to find out, you know, what was happening in Mississippi. I found nothing except for the potential, could be, maybe, the threats coming but nothing that I could find about what was happening on the ground and still have not been able to. The frequencies, ma'am, you know, I never, ever, ever do this. I slept for four hours this afternoon. I have been so exhausted and depressed. And guess what? These frequencies going off the East Coast Oh, man, it's really, you know, what we are living. Look at this storm evaporating here. It's, well, we are subject to whatever the hell the powers the be want to do. And I am really tired of it. North Dakota, uh, Montana. tornadoes and a tornado in South Dakota. Look at these frequencies being set off in Kansas, into Missouri. So maybe they were all trying to redirect the storm. Who the hell knows? So this was at 9.37 a.m. on the East Coast, Eastern Standard Time, frequencies shooting off still Southern California. I took this at 4.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It looked like all day long you were getting hit with really I mean, many areas with a whole lot of rain. So that's why I'm really surprised I found nothing nothing. And it was supposed to go through Arkansas. It seems that they have been very off in terms of the forecasting for this storm. Still little train thunderstorms going through our country. Still the extremely low frequencies, Southern California. Um, Montana, you had your precipitation soldiers going strong. Is there any, I also saw some pretty bad 
what looked like pretty bad uh, severe storms in Montana. You guys, can you weigh in? And this was at um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Mississippi is still getting um, lots of, you know, severe weather, pretty much in the same area. It looked like all day long, moving into Alabama, with all of these frequencies just being, these storms are so pummeled now with electromagnetic frequencies. So northern Alabama, or should I say western Alabama, man, a little bit on the east side of Alabama, how are you doing? It's so frustrating to know that you can spend a lot of time researching, looking at radar, and you still don't know what is going on. The eight o'clock, so it looks like Baton Rouge might have just escaped this, but some rather, I don't know, torrential downpours east of Baton Rouge. But, you know, I look at this and I just think, man, you know, look at these storms here in Montana. And you had some pretty weird clouds. And if I have time, I'll show them to you. Tornado in um, South Dakota does not surprise me. Look at this heating going on. This is in Texas. So this is 8 at 8 p.m. It's 7 p.m. This is what was happening. It's 10.47 p.m. now. So did you get some flooding here in South Texas and then along the coast down to the west? But of course, you see the frequencies at play. This is the Doppler, the Harp Nexrad ring here intersecting um, and the frequencies were going right through this. I watched a video today, someone posting, and they said that this was weakened uh, because they didn't see any extremely low frequencies being shot through the storm. I did. You know, some are pronounced and some you really have to slow everything down. Um, see the harp ring right here. I think I slowed it down to, to a manual. Yeah, and you can see the very defined line right here signature of extremely low frequencies. You can see that there is a circle right here uh, or the beginnings of a very defined circular line also up here. These, uh, the Doppler radar, the intersecting harp next rev rings, I've never seen them. So it's right here, which is the Louisiana Mississippi border. Um, you see the cutouts right here. You see the very defined line here. You see the sawtooth, which is a different frequency. Don't know exactly what it is. The sawtooth pattern. Sawtooth pattern up here. The circular line right here. Frequencies were going right through this storm from the start. So 
I just want to show you, you can see the microwaves, the rippling, and these um, jut, they just jut out sharp points. Those are frequencies going through this. You can see the circular line right here. You can see another circular line right over here. So, yes. Uh, maybe sometimes they just friggin' fail. Why isn't... What's going on here? Here. Alright, so this is Montana. So, the storms, if they brought a lot of uh, flooding, hail, tornadoes, then you can you can thank man. You can see the harp next red ring right here, the jut out right here, and if you can't see it on my video, then click on the link below and get a good eye for these patterns that you see in the precipitation. This is not a natural storm. You can see it. I see it very clearly. I get comments from people who say they can't see it. Well, you, then train your eye. Click on the link and train your eye. Because you can see them in every weather front. Look at this line right here. That's Barry. Really? This is not natural. Uh, right here. So, I won't bore you with all of the clouds, but yeah, nothing. All of the uh, storms, this is uh, Colorado. Shut out right there. Circular line right here with extremely low frequencies. The cutouts in the precipitation. All right. Well, so um, hang on. Okay, so here storms could go severe with damaging winds, large hail Sunday in Minnesota. Minnesota. I haven't been able to find anything except for this 4 p.m. update. Uh, this is just a warning. Uh, has anything happened in Minnesota? Because I did see that it looked like you were getting severe uh, weather. But Montana? So we've had a lot of thunderstorms move through the area in the last 36 hours. Um, we've had about uh, 300 lightning strikes in the Missoula and Bitterroot Valley in that time period. Um, upwards of 400 in the uh, uh, Flathead and the Mission Valleys. And if you look at southwest Montana from the Big Hole Valley down to Dillon in that area, we've had uh, 1,100 lightning strikes in the last 36 hours, roughly. What a surprise with all of the electromagnetic frequencies that they are using. A severe thunderstorm that moved through the state Sunday afternoon brought heavy rain, nickel size hail, numerous power outages, and extensive damage to central and north central Montana. And uh, look at this cloud. Is that rain or is that cloud? Okay. Uh, um, trees down. Yeah. But look at this hail. Look at this house. It looks like it's been shot up by the cartel. All right. Montana. I know that a lot of you are seeing this now. This is not lightning. And it's not like, uh, what do they call it, heat lightning or something? These are electrical charges in these massive clouds that build up 
uh, the use of negative ions, spaces. negative ions that they inject into the atmosphere, they hit it with electricity, I can't remember exactly, but I have on my geoengineering weather modification playlists the how to make artificial clouds. So does that look like a natural cloud to you? Are you seeing these black things you know, up against a very white cloud with a black cloud? Do you see, do you observe it for a while? Do you see them grow these black carbon dust clouds? Denver. Parts of Denver got hit with some heavy rain a few hours ago. You reporter Kristen Stewart shared this picture with us on Twitter of a lightning strike during the Rockies game delay. Now listen to how the storm sounded near the University of Denver. Ah! Jesus! You reporter Meg shared this tweet with us. This happened earlier tonight near Jewel and Downing. Meteorologist. It really is just unbelievable that people won't do the research. Hell, 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 hell. Now it's just a common occurrence in these thunderstorms. Did you hear that guy say, how many thunderstorms did they have in 36 hours? Remember when thunderstorms would come and go and that was it? And then you get to enjoy the fresh air and the coolness of the air and no, no, now they just come on top of one another you never get the clean air. You don't get the dark blue skies after the sun thunderstorm was gone. This is the size of the hell. Boulder, Colorado. That can do a lot of damage. Mott, North Dakota. And now people are left picking up the pieces. Cakes News reporter Sanji Milburn spent the day down in southwest North Dakota. She shares what the city is going through after the storm. It's a natural disaster no one saw coming in the city of Mott, a tornado. Now residents are recovering from the damage by cleaning up the best way they know how. I don't think we've had a storm like this for as long as I can remember. We've had some pretty high winds, but it's been a while since we've had a tornado that's destroyed this much. It was dark and you could tell things were falling down. It was pretty loud. As a result of the tornado, grain bins were destroyed, trees fell over, roofs of homes were torn apart, and recreational areas were flooded with water. It even destroyed buildings at the fairgrounds, which it Well, yeah, never saw this as long as I've lived here. All right, this is Charlotte, North Carolina. This was a rescue, a rescue. Do you find this a little strange that this was a rescue? This guy couldn't come out of his car and just walk the few feet to uh, pavement. Well, these people are not being knocked around. Yeah. So, I don't understand. Did he not want to get his shoes wet? Maybe I'm missing something here. If you see it, uh, please comment below. These guys are just standing in water and this guy needed to be rescued. All right, well, um, stock water floodings. I want you to listen to this. 
Mississippi Delta. Water flooding, swallowing homes and farmland throughout Warren County. This water has been getting deeper and deeper since February. And as the tropical depression slowly moves through, emergency managers are preparing for the potential for even more catastrophic flooding. All of this rain that we're getting from Tropical Storm Barry is certainly going to compound the problems that we're already experiencing. Warren County leaders are talking about the irreversible damage done to nearly 500 structures and over 220,000 acres of farmland, displacing hundreds of residents. We went in Thursday actually with the federal flood estimator and um, the floors have, hardwood floors have come up. The mold has grown all the way to the top of the roof and uh, all the cabinets are warped and it's just total loss. This homeowner is one of many who's expecting more rain to fall this weekend with nowhere to go. I was surprised it wouldn't bring a foot. So far it hadn't, hadn't made much difference yet, but it's not over. We're in a bathtub here and that can't be drained. If we had the pumps like they were designed to put in in 1976, we wouldn't have this problem. It's been months since some have been underwater, and many in the county are wondering if some understand how devastating it's been since. That's, that's the question everybody wants to know, is number one, does the rest of the country know what's going on in the Delta? With 550,000 acres flooded since February. The Red Cross is open to shelter at Hawkins United They've destroyed the Delta. They've destroyed it. Homes have been sitting underwater since February. I thought it was March. And yes, they could have pumped the water out, but they just didn't. So I will link below to these articles. If you think all of this is climate change, then please do some research. More and more and more scientists are coming out saying, no, this is not anthropogenic uh, climate change. Man is not causing this. Four members of a bipartisan panel of climate science experts all admitted that humans are not responsible. There was a, no, another congressional hearing with more scientists. I will link below to these articles. You can read it. You can listen to this uh, YouTube video. It's truly just incomprehensible to me that these are yet another <laughs> panel of scientists. Congress has held hearings on the climate change, global warming. They have heard from so many scientists who have said no, no evidence that man is causing climate change. Well, man is actually, but not the way most people understand it. Those who are controlling the weather, they are creating climate change. And when man can increase the heat in the atmosphere, bring about heat waves, and yes, I have on my playlist all of the evidence. Yes, black carbon dust is a great cheap method of creating these heat waves. Um, you know, that's how man is doing it. It's not because you use your air conditioning. It's not because you're driving a car. It's not, 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 not. And I just can't stand that this lie has sustained itself. Well, it's sustainable. Bombshell claims scientists find man-made climate change doesn't exist in practice. More scientists, yes, scientists in Finland, found practically no anthropogenic man-made climate change after a series of studies. During the last hundred years, the temperature increased about 0.1 Celsius because of carbon dioxide. The human con contribution was about 0.01 Celsius. The Finnish researchers bluntly state in among in one among a series of papers, 
that have been published in the journal Science Daily. The findings are hugely significant given this umbrella effect. Uh, they're talking about the high energy particles from space known as galactic cosmic rays affect the Earth's climate by increasing cloud cover, causing an umbrella effect. The low clouds, the aerosols, the aerosols. This is not a natural happening. Oh, we have proven that the GCM models used by the IPCC report in their assessment, their latest assessment, cannot compute correctly the natural component included in the observed global temperature. How many scientists have come out and said their models are ridiculous, the assessments worthy of the nearest garbage can? More scientists, far more, oh my god, scientists around the world. I mean, we had what, 37,000 scientists sign a petition, man is not causing climate change, disputing the mainstream media hysteria, the hysteria that comes from AOC. But the lie continues. It continues. All links are below.